Training reps to failure means you're lifting the weight on the exercise you're performing to exhaustion, to the point where it's impossible for you to go any further, to get any more repetitions. The question is, should you train each set to failure to where you can't physically lift any more weight, or should you leave a few reps left in the tank so that you can perform at that same level again in the next set, meaning you're less fatigued. If you want to learn how to burn body fat, how to get leaner and how to build more muscle with advice just like this, then subscribe to the YouTube channel and just click that little bell to learn more. At the end of this video, I'm going to share a bonus tip with you that will allow you to push your body into more growth. A lot of people will tell you that it's only really the last few reps that count when it comes to growth. Meaning if you was aiming for eight repetitions and that's where you hit failure, where it's impossible for you to continue after eight repetitions, only the reps seven and eight are important for muscle growth and anything before that really doesn't matter at all. Now, while I agree that those reps are very, very important, I think the range is much wider than that and that the reps before that do count for a lot more than people might think. There is limited studies that have been done on this, so really we're left with mainly experience, but around a year ago there was one convincing study that I use and reference by. I want to use eight repetitions as the example, so if you was aiming to get eight repetitions and you did get eight repetitions, the eighth means that it's impossible for you to continue, that is training to failure. The argument is, should we train with reps in reserve, slightly shy of failure, meaning if we could only get eight reps, we would aim to get six or seven reps. That's the argument. So let's break it down a little bit. And for this example, eight means failure. So if you could only hit eight reps, but you actually got four repetitions, that's a significant difference. We're quite far away from that eight reps and you're not gonna build anywhere near as much muscle as you would if you was getting eight repetitions. If you was to hit around five repetitions, again, it's not quite enough really to stimulate growth. You're really not gonna grow much from doing that. If you was hitting six repetitions opposed to eight, so you're just leaving two repetitions in the tank, you will definitely see a lot of growth from that. And if you was training to failure opposed to hitting those six reps and you was going for the eight reps, you would definitely see a little bit more growth. Now, if you was to hit seven reps opposed to the eight reps, what the study shows is that the difference is almost nothing. So you squeezing that extra rep out to go from seven to eight, just leaving one left in the tank, one repetition left, you're really gonna see no extra growth or a very, very small amount of growth, maybe one pound of muscle in just a few years, which means training reps to failure really isn't that important at all. This also means that if you've been training around three years or more, you're a little bit more advanced, you will for sure not see as good results training to failure. It's even less important for people who are more advanced and you will see slightly better results if you're just training as a beginner. So training reps to failure, if you've been training around three or more years, will mean actually slightly less growth all the stresses on the body of training to failure and that's something that we don't want. So at this point you might just think, well, if it's not much different, I'll just train to failure. My recommendation is that you train one rep shy of failure. The reason I say this is because it's basically exactly the same as training to failure. And this is the point. The people that train to failure First of all, they're far more fatigued than you are. They get far more injuries. They can't recover as quickly. Their nervous system can't recover very well. Their ligaments, tendons, all of those things can't recover as well as somebody that's just training one rep shy of failure. And also, if you go all out in that first set, let's say you're doing four sets of bench press and you go all out in that first set, the next three sets, you're not gonna be able to hit the same amount of repetitions that you did in set one because you've just gone all out. Whereas, if you could hit eight repetitions in your first set, but you only hit seven, that means you're gonna be able to hit seven for the next three repetitions. That means you get maximum stimulus to the muscle and maximum growth to that muscle without burning out and without being in that constant state of recovery. I recommend doing one rep shy of failure, but that's with perfect form, and I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. When I refer to training to failure, I'm referring to training to failure with good form. And what I mean by good form is strict form. So let's just say we're doing a bicep curl, for example. The second you start using your lower back to lift that weight up and pushing the weight up, you have hit failure. Even though technically from that point, 
you could probably perform another four reps by pushing the and swinging the weight using your back. That's not training to failure with good form. When I'm talking about training to failure, I'm talking about, let's say we're going for eight reps and you get to the seventh rep and you're slowly struggling to lift the weight up, but you're not arching your back. Your form is not breaking down in any way. It's okay for the tempo of the weight to be slower, meaning you're lifting the weight slower because you're struggling, but it's not okay to let your form break down. The second you start to lose even a little bit of technique, that means you've hit failure. That means that target muscle cannot handle the load of weight that you're putting on it, the stress you're putting on it, and so your lower back and other body parts are compensating to lift that weight. That means you've hit failure. I say that because a lot of people out there push past that point of real failure and they're doing another three, four reps arching their lower back and that's exactly how people get injuries. That's how you get long-term injuries. The only three times that I do reps until failure is if I'm lifting a light weight, so over 12 reps, because really, if you're lifting over 12 reps and you're lifting light weight, the only way you're gonna grow, the only way you're gonna build muscle while lifting light weights is if you're hitting failure. If you're shy of failure by even a few reps, you're not gonna build barely any muscle if you're lifting light weights. The second time I would actually hit failure with good form, and I don't do this all the time, but sometimes I'll do this on my last set. So for example, if we're doing three sets of a bench press, the first two sets I might be aiming to get eight reps as my failure, but I'll hit seven because I'm training one rep shy of failure. And then on the very last set, I might go all out and try and hit that eight reps, but only if my form allows it. Now, as I promised, I have the bonus tip for you, and this is a really good relevant tip for this video. So the reason people want to train to failure is because they want to push themselves. They want to force their body to grow. So without training to failure, I've got another way that we can do this. And what it is, is just incorporating drop sets and supersets. And I do this all the time. For example, on your full body workout days, which I just did a video on, you need to watch that video, I will do one bicep exercise followed by one tricep exercise, and I'll superset them. So instead of doing all the bicep exercises and then doing all the tricep exercises, a superset is where you'll do one set and then you'll train an opposing muscle group without any rest. So typically you would train a muscle group, have a minute's rest, train it again. What we do with a superset is we train, let's say a bicep curl, and then instead of having a rest, we go immediately to your tricep exercise, and then we'll have a rest then. So bicep, tricep, rest, bicep, tricep, rest. And you can do this with almost any body part. For me, I don't like to do it with back or chest, or legs. Because they're bigger movements, I don't really like to go with those movements and superset them, but you still can, and if I'm going a little bit lighter, then I will. If I'm going heavy, I'm not gonna be supersetting chest or back. Drop sets is another thing that you can incorporate into a workout. So the way I like to do drop sets is also with a rest pause style. So what you do is, so let's take that same bicep curl for example, and just to say you can do a drop set and a superset together, and that will really help you grow. So what you can do, is you take the weight, let's say you hit your eight reps with the bicep curl, then you might go and hit your eight reps with your tricep exercise. Now what you do, where typically you'd rest for maybe 60 seconds, you either don't rest at all, or you take around 10 seconds rest. It can't be any more than 10 seconds. And then what you do is slightly lower the weight. So just lower the weight enough until you can get around eight reps again. Then you'll rest 10 seconds, and then you'll repeat the same thing, slightly lowering the weight, and then just getting that eight reps again. But when you're doing the drop set with the rest pause style, you're completely overloading that muscle. But because the weight is lighter, it's not too taxing on the body. You don't have to do this all the time. It's something you can just incorporate in there. And I actually recommend a pose to go into that eight reps. That's obviously just an example that if you're doing a drop set, just up the reps a little bit. So aim for around 10 to 12 reps because you're gonna get closer to failure. 